I'm sorry to keep you guys waiting. The attendance tonight was 12,539. We did a gate of 1.53 million. Um, so, the hell did they write here? This is wrong, hold on. This is not right. Let me figure this out. Yeah, threw Jill right under the bus. So, this gets a little weird tonight. Travis Brown gets knocked out of the night, $50,000. Matt Brown gets knocked out of the night, $50,000. Chael Sonnen gets submission of the night, $50,000. And uh, fight of the night is McDonald and Pickett. They get $50,000, so congratulations to all of them. Who's got the first question? Well, we can start with you, Dana. Can we just get your uh, thoughts overall on the night? Obviously, a big night for the for the company. Uh, seemed like you know the fights sent it delivered tonight. So, what yep. were your thoughts? We we built the card that we wanted to uh, we wanted people to go. I have to find Fox Sports One, and uh, you know how it goes. Sometimes you build a card and it looks great on paper. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. This was awesome. You know, there was one fight that I didn't love on this card. I'm um, sure I don't have to say what it was, and, uh, but I'm sure you'll try to make me. Uh, but it was a great card. Everybody came in. Everybody fought hard. Everybody delivered. It was an awesome, amazing night. The crowd couldn't have been better. They were here early for all the fights. They cared about all the fights, and, yeah, I couldn't be happier. And Travis, I could ask you, um, obviously the kick ended up being a big weapon for you. That's been a, a bad thing for you in the past as well. I'm curious, did, did you know, I mean, you threw the kick a lot. Did you know coming in that that was going to be your strategy and that was going to be the weapon you tried to use? Yeah, you know, um, we looked at him from his K1 days and, and all of his pretty much UFC fights, and we looked for uh, a common denominator in what he did and, and some of his openings. And, um, you know, we came up with a game plan, and I didn't really execute it when I was laying on the ground crying like a little girl. But um, when I stood up, it just all it did was make me angry. And uh, I knew I wasn't going to go back down. I wasn't going to go down one more time. And I just moved forward and started executing our game plan. During that flurry while you were on the ground, uh, we thought he landed an illegal knee while you were down. Um, did you, do you remember that sequence? And did you feel like maybe you did get struck with an illegal shot? I thought he did too. Yeah, no, I, I didn't. You know, at the end of the day, man, this is a fight. This is what I signed up for. And um, something like that happens. You know, I, don't, I know he's not trying to do anything on purpose, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, you're just going out there to do your job. And um, I, I didn't feel anything different. I just felt him hitting me. So um, I, I just knew I, I need to get, get up and, and uh, get back to work. And just finally, if I could please for Matt, um, I know you're obviously not one that likes to ask for things and press for things, but you're on a very impressive win streak. It seems like you've been kind of under the radar for a long time now. This was an impressive win. Do you feel like you're in a position now where you can make some demands, you can make some requests of, of, of what you get next? No, I don't know. I fight whoever they want me to, man. But you know, obviously, there's only you know I'm only in this sport for one thing, and that's to beat GSP's ass. Evan, Put them on the radar. You guys are going to be the ones voting tomorrow, Monday. <laughs> Put them on the radar. Throw that at me. <laughs> Evelyn Rodriguez from uh, Global.com. I want to ask Chagun. I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm going to do in Portuguese. Uh, Chagun, uh, você não era finalizado desde 2007 quando você lutou contra o Forrest Griffin e foi finalizado no terceiro round. Você pode explicar como, assim, como você viu essa finalização e, enfim, a luta, como ela aconteceu e, enfim, mandar uma mensagem para o pessoal do Brasil? So the question, I, <coughs> she asked if Shogun was not submitted since uh, he fought uh, Forrest Griffin. So she wants to know how he feels the submission and what happened during the fight and if he has anything, anything to say to the Brazilian fans. Eu fiquei muito triste com a derrota, acho que ninguém quer perder. E o Sônia foi feliz e eu fui, o... eu fui infeliz, né? E a... o recado do povo brasileiro é que eu dei meu máximo. Eu, eu, eu sou a pessoa que menos quero perder, sou eu. Então eu que subo lá em cima, que parava a porrada na cara, então eu sou a pessoa que menos quero perder. Mas não deu, hoje não deu. Então eu estou muito triste com a derrota. Ninguém quer perder quando você chegar lá. Hoje, o Sônia estava feliz e eu não. I just want to say that I'm going to go there, I'm going to go inside the octagon, 
I don't want to lose. I try my best, and that's what I did tonight. So I just want to say that tonight was not my night. Diana, uh, Chael called Vanderlei Silva inside the octagon. He called him out. Uh, is that fight can happen? Well, it's obviously a fight that Chael wants, um, but there's a lot of options right now. At, at, at 205, he could fight there. He could fight at 185 because obviously the media has ha had him ranked number eight or nine at 185 underneath guys that he actually beat. Um, so, you know, obviously a, a win over Shogun puts him in a, in a great place at 205 and puts him in a great place at 185. Last question for a favor. Uh, I just want to know, like, how is your jaw and uh, your thoughts on the fight and on Yuri? My jaw's okay. I thought I broke it after that first little, uh, when he was punching me in the face a bunch. It hurt when I turned back around and pissed me off. And, uh, but I don't think it's broken. I've been eating and um, Yuri's tough. He was hitting hard. And I have to go back and check out exactly how I got in a bad position, but I think it was some sort of lateral drop. You know, he and I are the same kind of fighter. We go out there and get crazy, like, right off the bat. So that's kind of what happens. Sometimes you, uh, you know, it starts out bad, but it's all about how you finish. And I, you know, finished on top. Right here, I have a question. First, I want to say thanks, you guys. This was a really awesome night, really exciting, a lot of fun. Um, Michael, I have a question for you. You uh, came in here and stole Joe Lozon's thunder. Uh, you looked fantastic tonight. How did you feel about your performance? And, you know, did you feel any sort of sense of hostility coming in here? Um, of course, you're always going to feel hostility coming in um, somebody's, you know, home field, their backyard, and um, expecting to lose. You know, I felt it since the day I landed in Boston up until me walking out of the fight and even after winning the fight. But um, I feel good. You know, the fight was good. Um, I definitely wanted to finish him, but at the same time, I'm fine with getting out of here with a, a dominant performance like I did. And, you know, in the past, you've kind of won one, lost one. You know, maybe consistency wasn't always on your side. Do you, have you changed anything in the camp? Or do you feel like things are, are going in a way that you can be more consistent? Um, no, I haven't changed anything at all. It's just, you know, it's time to get serious. It's time to buckle down. Um, you know, it's time to actually make a run for this title, which is that's why I'm in the sport. So um, no changes, just you know, it's the usual. Okay, thanks. Uh, Chael. Uh, over here, man. Hey, um, you had been talking, we'd been talking, you, you'd mentioned uh, wanting Anderson, um, but tonight you talked about Vondelay. And I want to get your thoughts on which guy, I know you want Vondelay right now, but why Vondelay, why'd you call out Vondelay rather than Anderson? I know Anderson had the fight, but I know how badly you want him. Well, I'm, I'm not chasing uh, uh, the belt. You know, sometimes I'm just chasing guys. John Jones was an example. I just wanted to fight John Jones. He just happened to have the title. Anderson doesn't have the title. Uh, the biggest, projected biggest UFC of the year, December 28th at the MGM Grand. Anderson's got his hands full. I'm not trying to interject myself in that. But the reality is... That frustrates me, and there's some losses that do. And, uh, and I'm a stubborn guy, and I know he's got two wins, but I think I could get him on a third one. That's all I was commenting on. Vandalay Silva drives me insane. Vandalay Silva tells the media that he wants to fight me. I would love to fight Vandalay. Vandalay insists that fight has never been offered. That has been a big marquee fight for years. This company puts on big marquee fights. To believe that he has not been offered that fight is ridiculous, and it pisses me off. And all I need from him is for him to say he doesn't want to do it, and then I'm out. I'm not a bully, and I'm not going to pick on him, but if he continues to say it, he's going to continue to get me to respond. And I want to talk to you about your performance tonight. You know, you, you had two losses in a row. Uh, people like to say, Chill is just about talk to get these fights, but tonight you put on a tremendous performance. And is this kind of like a statement fight that there's more to Chell Sonnen than just talking about fighters and, and getting these fights and what have you? Well, you look, I fought the number one ranked guy in the world seven times. I fought the number two ranked guy in the world four times. I won all of those fights. I fought 13 guys ranked in the top 10, and I won 10 of those fights. I hear that about myself, too. I hear that, that, that Chael's all talk. But I fight some very, very tough guys. I won national championships in college because I had to beat four and five guys in one day. I'm very proud of my wins and losses. But I'm not afraid to call out a guy. I'm not afraid. This is America, and you won't get anything that you don't ask for. And there are certain guys that I want to fight. And if I can have the, the smallest hand in my own career, 
I see that that's a wise thing to do. And, uh, and that's where the, the talk comes from. Plus, the whole he's all talk thing is just so crazy. I mean, people write stories about this and say this stuff. It's ridiculous. First of all, he stepped up to fight John Jones on, like, no notice whatsoever. Stepped up to fight John Jones, and he fought Anderson Silva. Um, he lost to two pound-for-pound -pound best fighters in the world, both world champions. One's the greatest of all time. One's on his way to be the greatest of all time. At 185 pounds, where the, where the media ranked him at number eight or nine, my, he beat Michael Bisbing. He beat Yushin Okami. He beat, uh, he beat uh, Brian Stan, and the list goes on and on of guys who are ranked above him. He's beat all these guys. Can you give all me that stuff comes from you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys rank these guys. You guys, you guys write the stories. That, that's where all the talk stuff comes from. He's not talk. I say this all the time. This guy steps up and takes big fights. He, call, he asked for the Shogun fight. Can you give me your thoughts on his performance tonight? He, he, he submitted Shogun Hua. I mean, that's huge. What, what, what he did tonight, I don't think anybody saw that coming. I don't think anybody saw that coming. And in the beginning, if you look at the betting lines, he started out as the favorite. Chael did, and then it flipped. And Shogun became the favorite. You know how that happens? It means a lot of money went on Shogun for, for, that, for that thing to flip the way that it did. Uh, for, question for Dana. The, uh, you had an unusually high number of bonuses tonight, so There's gonna you're be obviously more. pretty happy. There's going to be more. And uh, so the question is, first of all, for you, um, do you feel you'll be coming back to town anytime soon? Absolutely. First of all, you know, I, uh, you know, I love this city. This is a great city. It's a great sports town. I've had a blast since I've been here. Um, and, and I just want to point one thing out. In, in uh, all the things that were said this week leading up to this fight, I wasn't talking about the Athletic Commission here. I was talking about Commissioner Murphy. That, that's who I was talking about. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of good came out of this. Because, you know, we all know, we've been through this all week, we've been talking about this, that the union came in here and, you know, they got some union puppets uh, fired up in this town and, uh, and they came after us. But, you know, when this whole thing is resolved, when it's all resolved, I think that everybody in, in the city of Boston and people like the Athletic Commission and people who are involved in combat sports here love this event and want us to come back again. You know, and it's like, you know, I, 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 you're you're going to laugh at this, but I like when the union does. You realize how much stuff they stirred up this week and what they did and how, how, how much this was on the radio and how much it was talked about because these guys came in and played their little games that they play. You know, and you even saw the Boston Globe wrote a story basically saying this was all just a, a union smokescreen trying to, to get at the UFC. You know, these guys are bullies. You know they don't? You know who Sheldon Allison is? Yeah, Sheldon Allison, you don't ever see it. They, 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 they cringe when they hear that name. So when you guys were asking me the other day, why don't we just bow down to the, to the union and give them what they want? We're never going to give them what they want. We're going to continue to do what we do. Sheldon Adelson beat him half to death, and we're going to do the same thing. And for Shale, um, did you specifically see uh, Guillotine as, as your best uh, path to victory when you're strategizing for this fight? And were you uncomfortable at, at, at any point during that round? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a hard fight. Um, I got in a couple of positions. Uh, and I wasn't able to, to hit Shogun. I threw a lot of punches that missed. Uh, I, nobody wants to be in, in half guard with Shogun. If you watch any video, that's where you stay out of. And, uh, and I'm going to run around and say I'm a, a better fighter than Shogun. I'm just going to say I beat him. I caught him in a guillotine. Had he caught me in a guillotine, I'd have had to tap out too. It was the first round. And if you get that position on a guy, it's very difficult to get out of. Relevance to the first round being is that uh, we're not slippery yet. And he just he couldn't slip out of it. And... Uh, had the roles been reversed, I'd have had a tap too. So real quick, so Chael Sonnen is ranked by you guys, number nine. Rockhold, Philippou, Munoz, Jocka Ray, Michael Bisbing, whom he beat, and Okami, whom he beat, are all ranked above him. And then you got the top three are Weidman, Silva, and Belfort. Makes sense. Uh, you know, champion, and then one is Silva and two is Belfort. How is Chael Sonnen not number three? Ask yourselves that question, ladies and gentlemen. Next uh, question. One last. Uh, um, Maurício, uh, você tem 20, 21 vitórias em 29 lutas, e você, é a primeira vez agora que você tem duas derrotas em seguida. Mas você vê isso como um novo desafio na sua carreira, já que você continua uh, sendo razoavelmente jovem? So, uh, Maurício, você tem uh, 21 vitórias em 29 fights. 
was the first time that you lose two times in a row. So you see this as a new challenge in your career? É, agora, agora com a derrota, eu realmente estou triste e vou sentar com a equipe daqui uns dias e conversar com a equipe e com certeza lutar o que eu amo e vou dar meu máximo sempre para sempre lutar e fazer o que eu amo, que é lutar e, e com certeza vou conversar com a minha equipe e ver o que a gente vai fazer. Right now I'm sad if they lost for sure. I will sit down with my team and, and set up the strategy to see what I have to do in the future. Dana, this question is for you. Um, first, congratulations on a great event. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> have you heard any initial response from FS1 on viewer ratings? Do we have any numbers on that? And how important would that be for you is for it to be high? For it to be high? For it to be high. Well, I, hope well, it's high. I hope it's the highest rated thing of all time. But you know, here's the reality of it. Um, Anytime you go to a new network, or you're especially launching a new network, you know, there was a lot of, this thing didn't come out till Wednesday, a lot of confusion, whatever. Here, here's all I care about is we delivered tonight, you know. Um, we came in, again, I always say my job is bells and whistles, and the gentlemen sitting on the stage and the ones who aren't here right now are the ones who deliver, and we delivered tonight, you know. I did my part, they did their part, and uh, I can tell you this, from, from the top of Fox all the way down, We've been getting blown up saying congratulations and thank you so much and amazing and we did our job tonight, no matter what happens on Tuesday. <clears throat> Question for Chael, uh, congratulations on the win. Submitting a black belt and all your wins, does that stand out more than any other given the fact that he's so decorated, a for the only former champion you've beaten or champion or former champion and also a Brazilian uh, jiu-jitsu black belt? Yeah, I think it does. I think it feels good, you know, but it's Shogun. Uh, the guy's a, a former world champion. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He, he's beat Liddell. He's beat Forrest Griffin. He's beat Machida. He, he, he's beat all these guys. He's, be, he's beat guys that, that I know and have looked up to, you know, from the Kevin Randlemans to the Mark Coleman's of the world. Uh, so, yeah, it, it feels good to, you know, whether you squeak out a win or you, you, you catch a guy in a, a, a good tight lock. Uh, it's, it's the biggest win I've had. And, and can you talk a little bit about going down and doing the TV immediately after? I mean, there's not too many athletes. Some guys don't even want to get interviewed as they're leaving the field. You go and actually do a broadcast after the thing was over. What was going through your mind on that? Why'd you do that? Well, I love it, and I, I would much rather participate uh, than sit out. A gentleman had just asked about the ratings, and, and the... The truth is, all of us together, you guys and all of us up here, tonight was a bit of an educational process. The channel didn't come out until uh, Thursday, and it was very tough to let people know. You could not set your DVR. You had to be at a, a, a TV today. It was tough. But uh, as far as an edu education goes, uh, Dana's produced a lot of shows, and they've all succeeded, and this one's not going to be any different. And Dana, if you could, um, Vitor, you know, kept saying he wasn't going to fight at 185. Now he comes out and says he wants to fight jail. Vitor, oh my God. So I was wondering if you could. So, uh, oh my God. It's like every time there's a fight, Vitor wants to fight that guy. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't even know what to say to that. It's crazy. So that, so that fight's not in the picture, I no. would take. Uh, like I said, there's options at 205. There's options at 85. Let's, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And one last question, Travis, uh, when, when Overeem was hitting you and, you know, every time the ref said move, you know, you, you were moving and everything, but A, how, you know, how bad were you hurt at that point and, and B, you know, were you afraid at all that uh, he's going to jump in and stop because he was leaning on his front foot a number of times? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was there mentally the entire time and that almost made it worse because I could, I could understand what was going on. Um, my body, my body just shut down on me uh, when he, when he hit me, you know, to the body, and um, I've never had that experience before, not in training, not in a fight. So it was a first for me. Um, but yeah, you know, I was yelling to Mario like, "I'm okay, I'm okay." He's all just move, and so I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna stand up. I can't breathe, but I'm gonna stand up." So um, yeah, I just popped up and you know went to town and started working my game. Something I should have done from the beginning. Uh, this is for Dana. Dana, I, I talked to Mark Radner earlier today, and he said uh, you, you, you guys are bullish about Boston and that you will be back we here. We will be back. You will be back yeah. in Boston. No, this was a great experience. 
don't let all the all the stuff that was said earlier this week, uh, you know what I mean, uh, make you guys think. This is, I love this city. This, this is my city. I love this city. And uh, everything here was a huge success. It was great. And uh, we will be back here. And, and this is the follow-up for John and uh, for Connor. You guys, John, I know you're from Boston. What did it mean for you to you know, come back here and, and win? Uh, it was a dream come true, man. Um, ever since uh, I was a little kid, I always went to the Boston Garden. It's a TD Garden, but I know it's the Boston Garden. And I always wanted to perform as an athlete, and it's just a dream come true. I can't believe it. I want to say thank you to the UFC, Dana White, Joe Silva, and, and it was a dream come true. I'm still living the dream. It's awesome. Yeah, it's an honor for me as well to come here, and uh, this is like fighting at home for me, and you know, but really, really, I don't... I don't give a shit. It feels like a loss to me, to be honest. I wanted, I wanted the finish, you know. And I felt the finish was there for me, and I injured my knee midway through the second. And I just can't get it out of my head. But looking back, I should have just pulled my knee from my leg and hit him with it. You know what I mean? That's that's what I'm. I mean, I'm I'm up here listening to it. this guy got of the night. This other guy got of the night. This guy got of the night. I want that. You know what I mean? I I, I don't come here. <clears throat> for decisions. We, we are rewarded for finishes, uh, uh, and that's what I'm looking for. I am a finisher, you know what I mean? And I, anything else to me other than stealing the show. I planned on stealing the show, and it didn't happen for me, you know, so right now it feels, it feels like I'm dealing with a loss at the minute, you know, so. But the support out there was unbelievable. It, it was green walking out there. The place was green. There was green flags, fucking leprechauns floating around. <laughs> it was unbelievable, you know what I mean? It was, it was brilliant. So one more thing that I forgot too when I was reading, they just, they just told me too. Um, we also gave, so submission of the night went to Chael Sonnen and McDonald. McDonald won $100,000 tonight. Yeah. Well, obviously congratulations on that. Uh, for Michael McDonald, please. This was uh, obviously one of the best performances of your career. Um, can you point to anything in particular that keyed your performance tonight? I gotta go watch it to give an accurate answer to that. But um, I think there was a lot of things that I changed. Um, after every fight, I always create a list of things I need to fix. It's not that big of a list when, yeah, like I fought Miguel Torres, and I got hit five times. It's not that big of a list. Yeah, I gotta get better head movement. You know, be ready sooner for the long range guys. But I had a huge list with uh, with Hen and Barrow. Just changed my diet, my philosophy on just combat and taking care of my body. Um, I just feel a lot happier, um, not just in my body, but I feel a lot happier in here and a lot happier in here. And a lot of people felt like you kind of may have gotten rushed a little bit to the top. Um, I'm curious, you know, kind of what you want to do now. I mean, you're still right there at the very top of the division, but it's, it's tied up a little bit. But, I mean, what's your plan? What's your goal right now? Do you feel like, you know, you want to get back to a title shot right away? Or do you feel like maybe there is some time for you to grow? Honestly, I think that will come in time. I'm 22 years old, and it's not, to me, a matter of if I will. It's just a matter of when. And I don't care when. The, to me, this is about, I'm going to pay for my life with, this, with this, this job. I'm in here for this day. I'm going to pay for my house. I'm going to pay for my kid's college fund. And I'm going to help some people in the process. Yeah, I think the title will happen in time. But that's not what I'm focusing on. I'm just focusing on becoming a better fighter every time. And one for Connor, if I could, please. Um, obviously, we know you're disappointed that you didn't get to finish tonight. But when you look back on this week as a whole, I mean, all the attention you got, uh, it felt like a main event there. I mean, you guys even brought the lights down. I know you showed the walk-in live on TV. I mean, all this attention that was given to you. What do you think? I mean, there were some of us that thought, is it too much too early for this guy? Do you feel like that at all? Do you feel like it was right? What, what do you think about the week as a whole? I mean, what these guys have done for me, you know, Dana, and not giving me all this attention and putting this on me, this, this is... These guys are making my dreams come true, you know what I mean? I'm forever grateful to these guys. That's why, that's why this is a loss to me. I, I come out to finish every, every time, you know what I mean? And I, I, Max is tough. I wanted, I wanted some exchanges with Max, you know what I mean? And I don't know. I'm blown away, but realistically, let's, let's get the next one in because I'm ready to whoop somebody re real quick, yeah? Uh, question for Uriah. And, uh, and Michael. It seemed like after this fight, both you guys had really good performances, and um, Twitter immediately matched you guys up. It seemed like that's what the, a fight that everybody wanted to see. I was just wanting to know what you guys thought of each other. Uh, we were just talking in the back. We are about an hour away back home, and I was there at his first fight when he was 16, and uh, it's been fun to watch you know, watch the kid grow up, and we've always had a pretty good relationship, and I think it's a fight that'll probably happen 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't make the matchups, but uh, I don't want to be getting with any three-piece combos from this kid. And, uh, you know, so it, it's definitely going to be a battle if it ever happens. <clears throat> yeah, you know, to me, the, this, this sport isn't about having to hate people and stuff. Brad's a good friend of mine. Um, one of the good good people you meet, you know, there's a few people in the sport you just meet that are just good guys, you know. Uriah's a good guy. He's, like I, he said, he's been, uh, he's been a friend of mine for a long time. And since my very first fight, I've known him, you know. And uh, if it happens, it happens, you know, just, just like what happened with me and Brad Pickett today, you know. We touch gloves and we beat the crap out of each other, hopefully make some money and, you know, build our lives together. This is, this is our job. And, Let's do it, man. You know, whatever, whenever the time calls for it. See that? That's how it works. That's how it works. For Chael over here, uh, you obviously called out Vanderlei. Afterwards, it has been mentioned that Vitor wants to fight you. Also, Leona Machida saying he wants to fight you via social media. Of those three, which do you prefer? Is it Vanderlei? Wants to fight him. I know. <laughs> so, if you had your pick of everyone, would it be Vanderlei? Ariel. I would beat up Vitor on the way to the ring to kick Vandalay's ass. And I'll take care of that third guy whose name I've already forgotten in the parking lot on the way to my after party. I will take all three. I'm not, I'm not excited to sign a contract to fight Vitor or Little Nog because they pull out. They don't show up and fight when they say they want to fight. I, everybody's a tough guy behind the keyboard, and so is Vitor. Now, I personally think Vitor is also an excellent fighter. He just doesn't always show up and fight. So I don't know how I'm supposed to go through one of these processes. Vandalay, not for nothing, he will show up when he says he'll show up. The same thing goes with Anderson Silva. Whether Anderson's hurt or not, if he signs a contract, he shows up, and that means something to me. And some of those other guys don't, and it's tough. You know, little Nogueira says he wants to cite Shogun. How was Sh why would Shogun sh sign a contract to fight a guy who said that before? He, he just did that. It, it's like Bear Rabbit. I wasn't born in the Briar Patch. Yeah, sure you were. <laughs> Is it 100% that your next fight will be at 185 pounds? Uh, that, 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 that was the plan, but uh, uh, let me stick around Boston a couple days. I'm going to get over to a place called Regina's Pizza. Uh, uh, before we get out to, to UFC tonight on FS1 on Wednesday. For Uriah, you, uh, you obviously came out with some big news this week about wanting some big fights, which a lot of people weren't expecting you to, to talk about this before the fight. Can you expand now on what you really want? I'm fighting at 135 pounds, and this is each time I make the weight, I put on more weight in like the 12 hours after the weigh-in, I put on 22 pounds this time, and uh, that was crazy for me. But I'm fighting really tough guys. Yuri Alcantara is super dangerous. He's got 24 finishes and 28 wins, and you know he's a guy that could be a world champion. I mean, he's at that level. So it makes sense for me to take fights with guys that are also talented, that people know who they are. So I just want some of those fights, and um, and I. I've got guys in the in the weight class that are injured that could be fights like that. So I, I'm I'm just open for anything, and I want I want to do fights that count, fights that people are excited about and are, are buzzing about, you know. So whatever that means, you know, I don't know, and I don't know if I'll get what I want, but you know, it makes sense to make some big fights with me. Yeah, and you know what? It's one of the things that I that I really respect about Uriah Faber. Um, you know, a lot of guys, you know, believe me, there's times you'll call a lot of guys, they'll say, I want this fight, I don't want that fight, you know. He doesn't say no to any fight. You know, no matter, he's the number two ranked guy in the world right now, he takes a fight with a guy that nobody knows and a guy that's very dangerous. Um, even though it might, it might not make sense, he comes in and he takes the fight. He knows and respects the guy and how tough he is. Comes in, that's what he does, he's a fighter. And that's one of the things that I always say, if you truly believe that you are the best in the world, you should be ready to fight anybody any day, and, and Uriah Faber is that guy. Two quick ones for Connor. Uh, number one, do you think you will need surgery on your knee? I don't know. I heard a big pop, and I let out a scream mid-round, but I passed into side control with it. But and I, I, when we stood back up, I was unsteady on it. I came out down for the third round. I chanced it, tried a couple of kicks, tried some shots, and I was wobbling on it. But... Um, I have, I have it wrapped heavy now, 
But um, I don't know, hopefully not. Hopefully not. I, I don't know, it's the outside of the knee, so usually that kind of pressure takes about six weeks, but I don't know, only, only time will tell, you know what I mean? So I'll know in the next day or two, I'd say. Forrest Griffin's famous entrance song was the, the Dropkick Murphy song. He debuted that in Belfast. Mm -hmm. Here you were in Boston, and you came out to it. Other than the obvious shipping up to Boston, was there any specific reason why you used that song? Um, I don't know. I stuck a little Sinead O'Connor on there as well, if you might have noticed that. Uh, I, didn't. Um, I didn't. She moved through the fair. That's, listen to that. That's some true Irish shit right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's some go to war shit. You know what I mean? So Dana wanted me to come out to you too. And I was, I was like, yeah, no. But I had that one picked and. Um, I ended up going with it, and Dana, Dana said, okay, you know what I mean? So, Sinead O'Connor, and then that Irish feel, and then kick into that Boston feel, it just felt right, you know what I mean? And blow the, blow the roof off the place, which is, which is what it did, man. The reception I got was unbelievable, you know what I mean? It's something I'll take with me. It was a special occasion for me. Thank you. Uh, question for Connor. Uh, you say you never have definitive game plans going in, into fights, but when you popped your knee in the second round, uh, awful things must have been going through your head. What did you do to adjust going into the third? That's why I don't have a game plan. Because anything can happen in this game. You can go out and your toe can hang off, you know what I mean? Your toe can come off, off your foot. You know what I mean? You have to adapt and you have to be able to adjust in the moment. So that's why I didn't have no game plan. And I don't know, I didn't really think about... I wasn't thinking, I was never... There was no way I was stopping. I was in no danger. There was no... I wasn't, not, not, a, not a deep breath did I take. I could have went another 25 rounds. I was never in trouble. You know what I mean? My knee, my knee popped, but fuck it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Um, I just went with what was comfortable. And what was comfortable was get the motherfucker to the ground. You know what I mean? And just kind of, and just play it from there. You know what I mean? But even, even still on the ground, I moved to mount. And I was trying to crawl my arm up. You know, like fucking the Adams family. You crawl the thing up for the head and arm choke. And he was just holding on. So even me, I could have, you know, I could have put a bit more effort into put, looking to posture up. And you know, I hype myself up big, yeah. I hope I hope hype myself up so big that everyone else hypes me up. But nobody criticize, nobody critiques me more than I critique myself. You know, what I mean? something. I plan on stealing the show every time. I plan on finishing everyone, anyone, anyone in the top ten, anyone, anyone, anyone they want. I'm going for the finish. And I'll, I'll look to hit them with any part of my body, any limb I have, I'll swing it. You know what I mean? And that's what I'm looking to do, so I don't know, fuck it. And uh, just two quick ones for Dana. Just from what Connor said there, uh, after his debut in Sweden, you had already in your head thought, yeah, Boston is where we want him next. Assuming his knee, uh, let's just say it is fine and he's back training on Monday, what would you think is next for Connor? Well, I think, I think what we need to do is, you know, he and I haven't talked yet, but probably need to fly him out west, get his knee looked at by, by you know, real good guys and, and, and see what's up with him. But I think, you know, the, I don't know. We've got to see what's wrong with him first. But I think the big thing tonight was, obviously, when a guy starts getting hyped like that, people start going, oh, he's going to get knocked out and all these things are going to happen. I think the big question tonight that I saw that people were saying is, let's see what happens when this guy gets to the ground. And he was on the ground tonight with a bad uh -huh. knee and, you know, He's definitely well-rounded, he's tough, he likes to fight, and uh, tonight was a big win for him. Max Holloway is no joke. Those, those, they're both two young, up-and-coming guys, and, and the thing about McGregor is he throws these kicks and punches from angles that other people don't. It's, pr it's pretty unique. And finally, you said during the week about, I don't want to be that guy, but you said during the week about a return to Ireland, and it's on the cards. You've seen how persistent... You <laughs> Every time you're that guy. You've seen how... <laughs> <laughs> You've seen how persistent Connor is as a fighter. The Irish fans have just been on to us all week. Who's here? Do, do you know the date we're going to Ireland? Does anybody? Let's go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to get an answer for you, sir. Yeah. We will have an answer for you tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> we will not have an answer for you, sir. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. First of all, Dana, right, right here in front. Uh, what do you think should be next for Matt Brown on this great streak? Mr. Fight? Fox? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, obviously tonight, that, that was a big win for him, man. Mike Pyle is a tough, crafty veteran, man. It's, you know, go, again, Matt Brown, you know, accepts this fight tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I, I heard, I'm, I'm going to say this. 
I apologize, but uh, you know, I'd heard in training things didn't go so well for Matt Brown in training with Mike Pyle, and uh, you know, training is is not fighting. Training is not fighting. He came out tonight and, and, and made quick work out of a guy whom a lot of people respect, tough, durable guy. So I, I think that, that tonight's fight put him in a real good position to, first of all, possibly, you know, get a spot in that top ten and then fight one of the top, uh, you know, one of the uh, guys in the top ten. I guess that's what I'm looking Matt, for. can you tell us about the problems in training camp that he just mentioned? Can you tell us about the problems in training camp that you just mentioned? Dana said your training camp might have had some. No, he said Mike Pyle beat me up in training, and he did. He beats up everybody in training. The guy in the gym is one of the best guys in the world. If, I mean, <clears throat> that's what. That's how it is, man. Mike Pyle really is one of the best fighters in the world. He just doesn't always put it together in the ring. You know, so I just come in to to whoop his ass, man. And I, you know, I, I knew, you know, it was, it was going to be me or him. You know what I mean? So hopefully, you know, it put me somewhere, you know, in a good position to, to get some big fights. I know in this sport, you know, you get what you earn, not what you deserve. So hopefully I earned something good here. All right. And for Travis, you mentioned uh, in the first answer you gave that in looking at Overeem's last fight, you saw certain things that he did and certain tendencies. What did you see? What exactly did you see? And how much did you practice that front kick? Uh, was that just something you, you saw in that moment or just something you practiced leading into? Um, yeah, we see, we see a lot of guys that, that fight like Overeem. They have, they have their elbows out. And uh, when you attack, they, they kind of duck their head and they kind of, you know, bring it down like that. So, um, you know, we, we saw that opening all day. And, you know, we're, we're with some of the best at Jackson's. And, you know, you can ask just about any of my training partners at Jackson's because I've hit everybody with that shot, and they've pretty much all gone down. And when I hit him in the gut the first time, I felt him deflate. So I kept going back to it. And then I, as he kept dropping his elbows further and further, that's when I saw the opening to the head, and I, and I took it. Thank you. And uh, one question for Michael. Um, I'm just wondering what your thoughts were in between the first and second round. You really put it on him in the first. Uh, looked like you could have got the finish, and he's still hanging around, still hanging around. What are you thinking to yourself when you go back to your corner, what you have to do to, to kind of finally finish it? I was really confused <clears throat> whether he had the toughest chin I've ever touched or whether I lost all my knockout power <laughs> in between camps. Um, now, I, more than anything, it was just kind of realizing, okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to put this guy away like, like I normally do. Um, I... I touched him so many times he's fallen like three times and he just keeps getting back up so I was like you know what I'm, I'm gonna take the pace and the power down just a tiny bit and I'm gonna just keep landing shots just keep touching them and you know it, it, it it's kind of draining when you hit someone like that and you get that huge rush of adrenaline three times or four times in a fight where your whole body starts working 110 miles an hour to knock someone out you know so I was just trying to calm my body and uh, make sure I you know, it was good for three rounds. All right, uh, this one's for uh, Chael and then Dana. Um, with your role on Fox as an analyst and a host, and uh, with the majority of the sort of back and forth between you and Vanderlei having taken place on Fox and then again tonight, does it make sense for that fight to take place on Fox Sports 1, or are you looking at it since it's been such a long build, maybe more of a pay-per-view main event? And what would your preference be, Chael? Uh, you know what? I, I don't have any idea. My preference would just be to, to get the match done or uh, to get him to rescind from the match and, and just move on. I, I don't want to keep on calling a guy out that doesn't want to do a fight, but I must respond. You know, it's kind of like politics. If one candidate says something, the other candidate has to respond. So I want to make it as clear as I know how to speak that I will fight Vandalay at any time at any weight class. If he changes weight classes, I will change weight classes. If he wants to fight out of the country, I will renew my passport. I will not have an excuse. I will show up and I will fight him. And Danny, your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think it makes more sense as a, as a Fox Sports 1 main event? I don't know. It could be either. Could be either. Could be pay-per-view. Could be Fox. You know, it depends on where it lands, what, what time of month and where. And then uh, real quick for you, Dan, and then I'll move to Travis Brown. Um, any plans to uh, run a show in Connecticut anytime soon? Uh, yeah. 
I mean, we, we, we got sanctioned there, definitely. You know, I could see us going to uh, Mohegan or, or one of those places. That was my follow-up is going to be, you know, now that, you know, it's, it's fully legal in Connecticut, would you be trying to stay away from those, uh, you know, Indian casinos, or would you still embrace them like no, you guys did in the past? No, we'd still go. They have a legit, uh, you know, sanctioning body there. We would definitely go there. Possibly before the end of 2014, you think? <laughs> that, I don't know. that I don't know when. Um, and then lastly for Travis Brown, um, it seems like you and Verdum are the, the two guys in there who should be in line for the, the next shot after JDS. Um, I mean, it looks like he's you know, ready to go. Um, Timetable-wise, just feeling after this fight, I know you said you went limp there for a little bit. Health-wise, I mean, do you think you might be ready in a, you know, a timetable that makes sense to where you guys can maybe get in the octagon and then the winner of that could be the number one contender? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I had some, uh, I had some issues during this camp. So, um, you know, I just have to get back to uh san diego spend some time with my boys recover for a while and um you know just see how the body body recovers in the next couple of weeks um you know i'm always game i've you know i've never said no to a fight and i've always been ready for anything they throw my way so um yeah it's definitely not out of the question um it it you know yeah it's up in there i'm gonna, I'm gonna take two more questions and the answer to your question is the third quarter of next year okay uh, for Uriah, um, you talked about your jaw, um, but after the fight, well, you got, you got caught in an armbar early on, and then after the fight, when you were talking to Joe Rogan in the cage, it looked like you were sort of holding your, everything's cool with the, with the arm. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get caught in an armbar. He tried an armbar. Well, but, uh, yeah, my jaw is a little hurt. Uh, my, my worst fight is when someone physically injures me, like Burrell, he broke my rib two minutes in. I broke my hand against Mike Brown. Jose Aldo kicked the crap out of my leg. So, uh, you know, but I'll still fight. You know, I'm, I'm in there till, till the bitter end. I'll be hopping after a person, like, trying to scratch at him or whatever. But, uh, no, nah, that arm bar was an attempt. He was below the, the arm, and I wouldn't care it anyways. And uh, the jaw was bothering me, but it just pissed me off, like I said. So, um, I'm good. All right. Cool. Yeah. And a quick one for Connor. Um, you expressed disappointment in the performance, but as Dana alluded to, you uh, you took the fight to the ground. You passed to uh, full full mount a couple of times at least. And I'm wondering if you uh, think that this performance, while it wasn't in one of your trademark knockouts, gives some people in your in your weight class something else to think about. I don't care what anyone in my weight class thinks. I know what I can do. I know what I do. In uh, in the gym day in day out another thing people are saying oh you got the three rounds in I don't give a shit about getting the three rounds in I do 300 rounds a week you know what I mean you can stick me in for 30 rounds in out there so I, I wanted to finish you know and I mean I'm looking to get paid here we get we get looked after when we finish this promotion once finishes you know what I mean and that's what I'm looking for these custom made suits aren't cheap <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> this this solid gold pocket watch Three people died making this watch, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I need, to, I need to put people away. I need them big fights. Or I'm going to end up in debt pretty fast, you know what I mean? So I'm looking to, I'm looking to hurry it along and finish everyone, you know what I mean? So that's, that's my thoughts on, on it. <laughs> we'll take one more question. Yeah, uh, two, quick two more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for Travis, uh, uh, I don't know if you've been able to sit down and watch uh, replays. <laughs> Uh, but uh, in hindsight, did you think it was sort of like uh, Anderson and Vitor? No, because Anderson wasn't getting his butt whooped for the first four <laughs> minutes of the fight. Let's talk about the last 10 seconds. Okay. Yeah, the last 10 seconds was pretty good. I, I enjoyed those 10 seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's something that has come to the sport. And, you know, there's, there's techniques nowadays that people laugh at you know, four years ago, five years ago, but then there's, there's guys out there making it happen and showing that there's a time and a place for, for every martial art that there is. Um, you know, and that's why I pride myself on being a, a, a mixed martial artist, not just a striker, not just a grappler or a wrestler. I was blessed to start this, start in this industry four, four years ago now. And, you know, I'm beating the top five in the world at heavyweight. So, you know, I'd, I got to give it up to my coaches for, for teaching me the sport of MMA. And uh, lastly for Uriah, uh, what specifically do you think made uh, uh, Yuri O'Connor such a difficult opponent at the start of your fight? And uh, was it 
part of your overall strategy to use the cage against him? Um, well, I just landed in a bad position right off the bat. We came in. I have to take a look at it. I saw quickly a little replay. It looked like I did like a switch step punch combo, and we clinched, and he went right into a lateral drop and got into great position right off the bat. And he rocked me with some of those punches, and uh, I could feel how strong he was. He had leverage, and all I was thinking is just give me an opportunity to punch him. As soon as I had any opportunity, I was giving him little rabbit punches, and that felt good. But, uh, you know, he's good. The guy's rarely lost. He's beat guys that are, are extremely, you know, talented. He, he has a knockout over Ricardo Lamas. And uh, my strategy was I figured speed was going to be a factor that, that I would be able to take advantage of. And I know that he likes to sit on the, on the guard and wait for arm bars. And I've never been submitted. I've, I've gone against world champions and black belts and, and things like that. So I, I definitely wanted to... to take advantage of the fact that he would stay on the bottom and wait for something, and I was just going to elbow the crap out of him. That's what I did. And we did work on that using the cage, just using the, put the top of his head on the cage. He's tough, man. I hit him with a bunch of elbows. What are you going to do with Alistair? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. Mr. Gall, you that cage? <laughs> so uh, we had an amazing week here in Boston. We appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. Have a good night.